On the telecast right now, Dr. Vijay Kumar Chaudhary is the Executive Director of Bihar Heritage Development Society. Dr. Vijay, if you could shed more light into uh, the 800-year-old history of Nalanda University. We've tried to, you know, encompass as much as we could in this short synopsis that we have provided uh, in short, a short presentation. There is, of course, much more to be deciphered and uh, get educated about and discover about Nalanda. And you, if you could shed light into it. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, actually, this monastery of Nalanda was built in 5th century CE. And remember, when Oxford University came into being around 1100 and Cambridge University in uh, 1200 CE, Nalanda University had already spent a career of 800 years. So in fact, this uh, university is uh, 1500 years old and it continued to exist uh, about 800 years. And remember when we struggle now to maintain the excellence of an institution, say for 20 years or 30 years, uh, this institution remained a center of excellence throughout Asia for 800 years. Not only students uh, from China, Japan, and other distant regions came here to study, but also the Asian dynasty vied with each other to connect their name with Nalanda. Such was the importance of Nalanda uh, in the contemporary world of uh, ancient times. And uh, for example, you mentioned that a uh, King Bal Putra Dev from Suvarn Des, which is co-terminus with Indonesia now, he built a monastery for the Indonesian monks coming to Nalanda. And uh, he requested his contemporary Indian ruler Devpal to donate five villages, the revenue of these five villages for the upkeep of Nalanda. So, uh, in fact, Nalanda was a great center, not only uh, for the learning of a Mahayan Buddhism, to which it was primarily devoted, but it also taught Vedas, which formed an alternative or even rival tradition of that time. It also taught medicine and other uh, branches. And the cosmopolitan nature of the ancient Nalanda University is much to be admired about. I will give you an instance. There is a 9th century inscription of Devpal again, which says that a gentleman called Beer Dev, who came all the way from a place called Nagrahar, which would be now uh, along the boundary between Pakistan and Afghanistan in Swat Valley. And he came and stayed in a lesser monastery of that time called Yeso Barnpur. But soon his academic fame, his austerity became very well known. And the monks of Nalanda appointed him as the chancellor of that university. Mm. So there was no son of soil filling. A person coming from as distant at a region as uh, Nagarhal would become the head of this Nalanda University. Yes. And we, yeah. So, so but so, uh, uh, Dr. Vijay, so, uh, you know, there have been excavations and discoveries that have been done by the Archaeological Survey of India. In fact, there had been excavators from, uh, 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 from the British era who would come and study this site. Uh, there have been travelers from China who have uh, uh, written uh, about the Nalanda University in, uh, you know, and, and we've been able to find their texts, we've been able to decipher these texts, and, and now it's public knowledge. Uh, why has it taken so long for, uh, uh, and, and is, there, is there now uh, even an opportunity for tourists to visit Nalanda and uh, absorb the sights and scenes? Yeah, actually, you see, uh, soon after, its decline in 13th century, uh, Nalanda University went into oblivion. In fact, uh, Buddhism to which this institution was primarily affiliated to, it said decline in the mainland India. And the extent of amnesia was so high that when a British traveler, Buchanan Hamilton, visited Burgaon, the site of Nalanda ruins now, 
he was told that these ruins, the heaps of bricks, the sculptures, they belong to the King Bidar of the Mahabharat fame. So, uh, and then, uh, as you rightly said, that Chinese traveler Shuan Sang visited Nalanda in 1630s and he left a detailed account. And the English translation of this account was published uh, in the beginning of 1850s. And there, uh, Cunningham, the, uh, the, the pioneer of archaeology in India, he caught hold of that translation. And in that account, it was written that from Raj Greek, the distance of Nalanda is so much. And when he reached at the site, he found two seals, inscribed seals, and both these seals read Sri Nalanda Mahabihar Vikshu Sanghasya. And that is how that the identification of Nalanda Mahabihar was cleansed in 1861. When we take a look at the site, even the Nalanda ruins, uh, uh, as well as the uni new university that has been set up, uh, it is surrounded by water bodies. There is a huge expanse of forest area that has also been kept. So it's it's a it's a it's it's a self-sustaining uh, ecosystem in its own, uh, where the idea is for scholars, professors uh, from across the world uh, coming and settling over there, and students also from across the globe coming and. Uh, living over there for a certain period of time till their, till their curriculum allies, uh, allow, uh, allows and be imparted with knowledge and education in different subjects. True. You are right that uh, uh, there are huge water res reservoirs around the Nalanda Mahabihar and some of the water reservoirs extend up to an area of 100 acres. So, the recent research is uh, in Buddhist institutions, they have demonstrated that these monasteries not only uh, imparted education and did the religious duties, they also managed the irrigation system around their surroundings and also other humanitarian works they did. That, that was their USP and that is how they maintained their respectability in the surrounding society. And yes, that is the spirit of Nalanda, the ancient Nalanda had that spirit of cosmopolitanism. Imagine uh, an institution uh, in the state of Bihar uh, from 5th, 6th, 5th, 6th century to 12th, 13th century, that ethnicities of different regions uh, were collected and they, in the spirit of coexistence, studied, taught. I will just give you another uh, piece of information also. Not only Nalanda Mahabihar, but there are uh, several uh, Buddhist uh, monasteries, ancient Buddhist monasteries in the proximity of Nalanda Mahabihar, which also gave education and from where we also get evidence that people from different regions, from different nationalities came and studied. So that is the spirit of Nalanda and the present Nalanda University is sure to live up that spirit of Nalanda. 